The skincare products I wish I could return or preferably wish that I would have never purchased or gotten in the first place. I have been spending way too much money recently. <coughs> I have spent way too much money and a lot of these things just didn't work out for me. And of course it goes without saying that, you know, everyone's skin is different. Everyone is gonna have different preferences when it comes to skincare. And you always know that what works for my pores might not work for yours. But at the same time, there are reasons that I'm not returning these. And there are reasons that, oh, I very, very much want to. So in the sake of me trying and buying things so that you don't have to, I'm gonna attempt to save you a little bit of money right here. And you may be saying, well, Cassandra, you have a receipt. Why don't you return these. I care a lot about waste and one of the biggest things is that when I return a skincare product it cannot be put back on shelves because of contamination right and so I have a big issue with that for most people I totally advocate take advantage of your returns if a product didn't work for you that's totally fine for me because I have so many people that I know I can give things to or I can let someone else try this that might not work for me I'm just gonna kind of pass these forward to people who will hopefully love them more than I do starting with this one this is so nasty this is when Amazon does not pull through. Amazon actually has some fantastic skincare, including international skincare, but this one heavily disappointed me. It was about $6 and um, it was not worth a single cent. This one is from M Skincare, which I don't even know what that is. And it's an acne control serum with azelaic acid. I don't even believe this has azelaic acid in it. It's literally like water. It doesn't do anything. And if anything, it gets kind of crunchy and crusty on my skin. This is one of the worst azelaic acid products I've ever used. And it's not for the reasons that most azelaic acid is bad because it gets all gritty. It's literally like water. Like what is happening? The $7 are not acneing and calming my irritated skin or preventing breakouts at all. This was a disaster. We did an entire video on ranking azelaic acid products from the absolute worst to the absolute best. And this is one of those examples where less expensive did not pull through. I will be sticking with the ordinary. Thank you very much. I will be sticking with my Dr. Sam's Flawless Serum. I don't even know who I'm gonna pass this forward to. Like what do I do with this? Like I actually don't even know who I would give this to. I was so excited about these from Pacifica. These are the Wake Up Beautiful Microneedling Patches. And when you hear that with Gran Active Retinoid with this hyaluronic acid, you think, oh my God, this is going to brighten my under eyes. It's gonna make me wake up looking beautiful and refreshed. That's what you think, right? Well, that's what I thought when I got these at Target. And then when Doris and I went to put them on our faces, I literally thought this was going to be like the Skin Iceland Microneedling Eye Patches. Dude, the Skin Iceland for like $14 worth every cent. It literally changed the color of my under eyes and it lasted all day. Those, I got them from Skin Store. They're also available at Ulta. Those were bomb. So when I saw that Pacifica had one that looked very similar, but had Gran Active Retinoid instead of just hyaluronic acid, I was triple excited because retinoids are what? The gold standard in dermatology. They help with wrinkles, fine lines, with acne, blemishes, scars, etc. Well, lo and behold, these are not under eye patches. These are pimple patches and they're not very good pimple patches. I love the Zit Sticka pimple patches. They have those micro darts they basically penetrate into a pimple and dissolve. And when trying these, they do have little ridges, but they're so small that it's almost like they don't get into the skin. And what I love about a patch with these tiny little dissolvable darts is that it goes into the skin, it dissolves, and it shows you almost immediate results. With the Zit Sticka pimple patches, you see results overnight. With this, I just didn't see results. And Gran Active Retinoid, I thought that would be so awesome for, for skin and for under eyes. But when you put it on a pimple, it's not like salicylic acid, or it's not like tea tree or something that actually kills the acne bacteria. You know, this is something that works over time. I just found this to be extraordinarily disappointing. I feel like this is such a great concept, but just such a bad execution. This just wasn't it for me, and I didn't feel like it did much for my pimples. Now, I will say these are about twice the size of the Zit Sticker, which was nice, but um, I, 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 maybe I'm an idiot for not reading the package more diligently, but I thought this was an under eye patch, and because of my expectations, I was disappointed. Now, this might work for somebody else, but I'm gonna stick with my Zit Sticker. If they ever come out with like an under eye patch of these, or Doris had that great idea of doing a forehead patch, like a seal patch with micro needles, oh my God, I would be all over this. But this one, Pacifica has some excellent products like their vegan line, their other wake up beautiful products with Grand Active Retinoid are phenomenal. This missed the mark and it did not help the marks that acne left on my face. So there's that. Another product that I was so disappointed by is this one from Biosance. Biosance is an excellent brand, but they are a little bit more on the pricey side. And I understand why when it comes to how they source products, their sustainability, etc. But this 
this phytoretinol serum was a phyto fiery disaster to my face. I literally mean a phyto fiery disaster because this makes my face so red. This phytoretinol serum is supposed to be squalene and then it's supposed to have this, you know, phytoretinol, which basically means a plant retinol, which in this case is basically Bacuccio, okay? And then it's got a bunch of these citrus oils, which not everyone is going to have an issue with citrus oils. I know that some people like this, but this did not do it for me. And it just made my face irritated. <laughs> when I use this, my face looks and feels like I'm on fire. It doesn't feel good. I don't feel like I'm getting the benefits of a retinol. And again, it's a Bacuccio serum, which we love some hoochie coochie Bacuccio. We've actually done a video with a whole bunch of favorites, but this serum just isn't it. And especially when it comes to Biosans, I love some of their other products like their jelly cleanser. I love their Omega cream. They have such good stuff that I thought 60 something bucks, like it's going to be worth it, right? No, 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 no. I know they tried to mix like nature and science and put them together, but this one missed the mark. And oh my God, it smells wretched. Like this smells what you expect clean skincare to smell like. It smells terrible. And it's just so sad because they have such great products elsewhere. But this one, this is just bad Bacuccio. I'm calling it as I see it and I'm seeing it as I'm feeling it because this one burns. It says clean, conscious, high performance. Clean, whatever that means. Conscious, I'll give it to them. They are very conscious. High performance not this one. I wish I could return this. I'm obviously going to pass this to someone who doesn't have citrus irritation, but uh, yeah, this was, this was not for me. And um, this was an expensive mistake. Speaking of other expensive mistakes, we need to talk about herbivore, specifically the lapis oil, lapis, lapis, the lapis oil. This is basically a blue tansy oil. And I originally bought this because Caroline Hirons raved about it for acne prone skin and blue tansy oil. First off, it is beautiful. And on top of that, that, yeah, it's supposed to be better for acne. Now, this is the mini. I have tried the large one and I used the whole thing. Very, very expensive. Don't recommend. This smells divine. It is very, very beautiful and blue and beautiful if you want to put it on your countertop. But this was just not worth the money. And the piece of oil, again, for some people, they're going to love it. But when I used this, I felt like it was more for the aesthetic than it actually like balanced out my pores or like made me feel amazing. Was it the worst of the worst? No. Did it feel like water? in a product? No. Did it light my face on fire? No, but I just didn't feel like this was all that. And then I love brands like Acure. There is Bioma that I bought at Target and spent way too much money. And the Bioma had some blue tansy oil. And I just feel like you can get blue tansy oil at a less expensive price that is a similar quality. And yes, quality and sourcing, all of that matters. But I have found other products that arguably work better with the same ingredient and I don't have to spend this much money. And it's one of those that if I could go back and just preferably not even purchase the product in the first place, or if I can get over my fear of returning things, it is one that I wish I could return. It was like 70 bucks for the big one. The bottle was pretty, but it didn't make me look or feel as pretty as I wanted it to. Another product that does make me look very pretty, but that smells wretched is this one from Topicals. Now Topicals is an amazing line and this is called the Faded Cream. There's a reason that everyone's talking about this. It does fade stuff. If you basically want all of the anti-hyperpigmentation stuff, they took it and they shoved it in here. I love what this product does for my face, but I hate the way it smells. Now I do have good news about this. It sounds like topical. <laughs> It smells so bad. Topicals did come out with a new formula of this. I guess they got so much pushback on the scent that they made one that is unscented, but this, it smells pretty wretched, I will say. And when I wear it, it makes me smell wretched. And therefore I feel like I can't wear it around. This is one of those that I really want to love and support because it really does what it says it does. And the two founders, they're both women who had skin conditions and they basically created a brand that was packaged for them and did something about it. And even the packaging is like eco-friendly and recyclable or it's better for the environment environment, right? The ingredients are really good. I wanted to love it. Oh, but the smell, the smell is atrocious. Now, if you don't have nostrils or if you don't care about the smell, and again, I'm usually someone who does not care about the smell, then you're fine. But for me, I'm someone who genuinely doesn't really care about smells all that much. Like I, you've seen me, I don't really care if it's fragranced or not. This one is on a different level. It's a no-go. I'm definitely going to be purchasing the unscented one if I can find that at like Ulta or something. But this is one of those, I, I wish I could go back to Ulta or wherever and just be like, hey, can you exchange this? Like, can we return this? The problem is that it's such a good formula. I don't want the formula to go to waste. So I've been putting this on my little shaving cuts on my ankles, hoping to fade some of those scars that have been there since I was like 12 and first decided to shave my hairy wookabee legs. Oof. 
God, now I can't even film this bit. Like, it smells so bad. What does this even smell like? It smells like rotting food that you left in old Tupperware. It's not potent like that. It's not like, it doesn't smell like the rotting food. It smells like the Tupperware that the rotting food soaked into. And it's like that plasticky, little bit gross, leftover Tupperware smell. That's what it's given me. It's just like, I, I wanna love it, but <laughs> I can't. Not with a smell like that. It's kind of like someone who has a baby and they're like, look at my baby. And you're like, listen, I want to love your baby, but that baby is ugly. There are a lot of ugly babies. <laughs> I do care was a dewy disaster, a dewy gloopy disaster. And I am so, so upset because I did not only ruin my face with I do care, we ruined Doris's face. We went to Marshall's and we bought the little I do care mask pack. And I was so excited to be a galactic holographic kitten. And it just didn't turn out that way. We basically purchased this three mask set thinking it would be like a fun face mask. And they ended up being the peel off masks. And if you remember the peel off masks are not recommended. They're not even masks. They're basically aggressive exfoliants, not sandpaper type, but like peel off exfoliants. Peel your skin off, why don't you? Yeah, that's what they did. Now, I'm so glad that we bought these at Marshall's and not anywhere else because at Marshall's they were less expensive than other stores. The packaging was super cute. I'm really glad that we got the minis and not the full size, but literally mine didn't even solidify on my face. Mine was like a gloopy disaster. And it was like, imagine just like wiping liquid plastic on your face and trying to get it off like nail polish. Have you ever tried to like remove glitter nail polish and like it gets gooey and it gets on everything, but you can't actually remove it. That's what mine felt like. And then Doris is like, it like ripped her skin off. It was terrible. All of these were terrible. And I do care. They have some really cute products. I really, again, I love their branding, but the product inside of these, heck freaking no. And this is why I love sample sizes. Thank goodness for Marshalls and the discount section. Thank goodness for Target coupons. Thank goodness for Amazon sales, because if I paid full price and got like a full amount of these, I would be one mad meow. Something else that made me super upset was this from Fenty Skin. <laughs> Fenty Skin has been growing on me. I'm telling you, I've been playing around with the Hydrovisor. The cookies and cream is brand new and boo, do I got something to tell you about that. But when it comes to this, I saw this launched at Sephora for $40 and I was like, pre-show glow, glycolic acid, I've got to buy this. And then after I bought this, Fenty was so sweet, they sent me one. But as you know, I test products that I purchase with my own money as well as approach gifted products as if I purchased them with my own money because I remember what it feels like to be this bitch with acne on her face working at a telemarketing job spending $90 on a Sephora cleanser to cure my acne when I was depressed and sad and breaking out and nothing was working and so because of that I take testing my products very very seriously because this channel you know me being an acne big sister is basically being there as the big sister for that girl who didn't have one right and I decided to test this out for $40 and I was fortified with disappointment. Fenty skin. The formula, it is really nice. However, it is so tiny. There is barely any in here. And then they give you like this washcloth thing. I'm like, the f is this? This is like, what is this? It's like a, it's like a wristband. Like this is a bracelet. What, what is this? It's so tiny. It is, um, an instant retexturizing treatment. This is more like a cleanser. Like just get yourself a glycolic acid cleanser. It's 30 milliliters. It's one fluid ounce for 40 bucks. And again, does it smell nice? Sure. Does it have some good ingredients like cranberry and lactic acid? Absolutely. But this is a basic ass glycolic and lactic acid wash. Now it is potent. And I will say if you're looking for you know, an exfoliant. It is a really, really good one. But I used this and I was like, why so expensive? <laughs> the other Fenty products give you much more bang for your buck. And a lot of these come in this refillable, you know, packaging. They really did a lot with the ergonomics of this. They did a lot with the user experience, you know, the refillable packaging. I love it. This isn't even that refillable. Like where did the idea of recycling and reusing and like all that stuff that they launched with, like, where did that go? I was so disappointed by this. I have one that was sent to me. So that's going to be given away to somebody. And um, <laughs> I'm actually not gonna give this one away. I am going to continue using this one and finish it, but I just wouldn't spend 40 bucks on this. And I kind of wish that I could just walk my ash back into Sephora and return it because it's like, that's expensive. 40 bucks for this and a sad excuse for a washcloth? That is a sad washcloth. Fenty skin cookies and cream is a whole different conversation, but this one, 
<laughs> this is the kind of stuff I cry about. No relationship drama, just sad, sad experiences with bad products. <laughs> Speaking of sad products, you know how I feel about eye creams, right? Yeah, 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 you know. Why most eye creams are crap, and what you should know before wasting your money on another one. I am so vocal about my opinion of eye creams that so many people send me eye creams and they say, Cassandra, is this one different? Is this one an anomaly? Is this one an outlier? And being the skincare nerd that I am and always wanting to check my biases, being the curious consumer, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna see if it works. And usually I am fucking disappointed. <laughs> And I thought to myself, the Inky List is such a great brand. They have a caffeine eye cream that I like all over my face. They have a retinoid eye cream that I like as a spot treatment all over my face. Maybe the Brighton eye cream is something different. The Inky List very rarely steers me wrong. They are inexpensive, they are affordable, they are knowledge-based. I love the Inky List. What did my ass do? My ass got the eye bright cream. And what the f did the eye bright cream do? It was basically like putting makeup on my under eyes. It did nothing. I mean, if you're looking for a moisturizer for your under eye areas, fine. Spend the cost of a delicious double stuffed sandwich on a tiny tube of moisturizer that has glitter in it. It literally has mica, which made my under eyes glittery. And do they look bright? Sure, but it's not because my eyes are actually brightened by this product. It's because the product is literally basically makeup. And then when you wash it off, the effects go away. Now I know this about eye creams. I am skeptical about eye creams. I speak about hating eye creams. And yet I gave this eye cream a try and it reminded me why I shouldn't do it. It is makeup in a moisturizer. Literally, get yourself your favorite moisturizer and put it right here and you're basically doing the same thing. Put a little glitter in there, a little bit of mica, a little glitter, glitter. Good job, you've just applied makeup. Again, love the Inky List, but just because you love a brand doesn't mean you're gonna love everything from them. I don't even have this. I passed it on already. I gave it away. This was just such a shit product. It was so bad and it wasn't even worth, you know, my Ike's sandwich. If you haven't had an Ike's sandwich, <laughs> baby, come to California. Mm, the pumpkin one, Mwah. delicious, delicioso. And I know it sounds like I'm complaining about all these products. Again, yes, they're going to work for some people, but I have something that I won't complain about. And that is the K-Skin customer service. Although I need to continue complaining about the shit products, the separatey diarrhea doo-doo mess, the burn shit Dijon mustard disaster. These were horrible. And I am just here to say on such a positive note that while I wanted to return these, I actually tried to return this one. They let me keep it so I don't wait it and refunded me and then I didn't even try to return this one or the body oil yet without even asking they saw my mother video review they gave me a return no questions asked and they didn't even tell me to take down the video they said thank you for your feedback do you want to talk to one of our chemists best customer service ever and when the customer service is a 10 out of a 10 but the formula is like a zero like a negative 10 out of a 10 what do you do so i'm very grateful to say that even though i wanted to return this i didn't yet i still got refunded now i am sitting here and i'm like what do i do with this like i cannot put this on my face i understand that the mousse one didn't separate for everyone i guess for some people it actually comes out as a mousse but no matter how much i shake it this one just separated for me and i love that the brand is taking responsibility they're caring about it. They're caring for customers, which is excellent. I've also heard their lip stuff is amazing. I can't even put this like on my arms. Like what, what do I do with this? Oh yes. And Sephora did pull this product. I'm just saying, should I call the chemist? I still haven't called the chemist. Should I call the chemist? Should I ask them what's going on? Should we do a, a part two review of the mousse one? I don't know, but I will say that I wish I could return all of these products, but thankfully I have a beautiful butterfly community, which includes you as well as wonderful editors, friends, people who have been aesthetic clients who are okay okay with slightly swatched products that I can pass these forward to. And again, if you have a shitty product, you have every right to return it. Get your money back, baby. You worked hard for it. And if a product isn't working out for you, this is one of those instances in life where you can do an Uno reverse, go for it. But if you have a friend or family member or you can do like a product swap, yes, that is better just for the sake of sustainability and not wasting our products. And if you can put it on your feet the way that Hiram does his St. Ives apricot scrub, then more power to ya. <laughs> Remember to not repeat the mistakes that I did. If there's another product that you want me to buy and try so that you don't have to waste your money on it, let me know and I shall. Stay hydrated, be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. If you want to relive a memory, oh, that's a memory. If you, you want to have some fun, there you go. There you go. You know what's even more fun? The memes at the end of the video. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.